We're back now with our special correspondent, Elizabeth Smart. And Elizabeth, today we're talking about uh, a massive problem that is going on in the country, sexual assaults, uh, I guess the reporting process as well, and the associated shame that a lot of these women feel. It really makes me feel terrible to think that these women are not coming forward and getting the help that they not only need but deserve because they're too worried about the rules that are in place, worried that they'll get expelled. Well, let's take a look at this powerful and important story. They came to college not just to further their education, but to find a sense of belonging, to find themselves. Unfortunately... I was telling him no repeatedly. Evil intentions found them first. He literally pushed my body into places that broke them. Brigham Young University students Haley Allen and Colleen Dietz both say they were repeatedly raped and assaulted by men they knew. In Haley's case, someone she even considered her boyfriend. After three weeks, I finally said, if this is going to be my life, then what do I need to do to be OK? And so I told him, I said, okay, I won't fight you this time. He, anything, was just more frustrated with me because I wasn't fighting back. Though Colleen's alleged attacker wasn't a boyfriend, he was someone she considered close, which is why she says she actually went back to him after her assault. I wanted to talk to him about it and say, why did you do these things? He convinced me that we needed to have the conversation in person, and unfortunately, the whole thing happened again. Though it may be hard for some to comprehend how either girl could be re-victimized, our own Elizabeth Smart understands all too well. I can say, because I know I have been physically chained up and then I have been manipulatedly chained up, and I can say that that power, that manipulation is so much stronger than any physical chain anyone could ever put on me. Eventually, both girls would muster the courage to report what happened, not to police, but to the school. And that's when they say what should have been the beginning of the healing process only aggravated their wounds. When was the first time you came forward? Um, I went to the BYU Honor Code office. I went to them knowing that it was wrong. And I went to them hoping that they would understand. But Haley says BYU's honor code, which strictly prohibits any sort of, quote, sexual misconduct, only allow the school to turn the blame on her. When you choose to go to that school, you choose to follow the honor code. However, you have to see how it's being applied. And especially in the case of victims of sexual assault, you have to make sure that, that honor code is being applied in a way that's not hurting the victims. And in Haley's case, she says that's the exact opposite of what happened. I told her I don't remember the first time. And she stopped me and she said, I just need to know how many times and whether it happened on or off campus. And I was like, what? What it was such an absurd question to me. And I said, but I don't remember the first time. And she said, expect to be expelled. And it was much the same for Colleen, though instead of going to the honor code office, she went even higher, to her bishop. They act as gatekeepers to BYU, and I shared with him what had happened. He immediately started on the, the discipline process. Also in that conversation, he asked me if I was pregnant, and then at that point he made it clear to me that if I were to become pregnant, then I would, be, I would have to leave BYU, that I could not remain at BYU if I were to be pregnant. It was at that moment that I realized that through no choice of my own, my whole life was being ruined. Both Colleen and Haley would fight back. And after lengthy, they say humiliating review processes, the girls were found innocent of any honor code violations. But they say the whole experience made them reluctant to talk to anyone else. And their alleged attackers were never brought to justice. The predators actually take advantage of uh, situations like honor codes at different universities or institutions. And so I, I think what we've learned from this case, I know I've learned, that that is a true obstacle to victims reporting. In a bold move, even the Provo Police Department has recently come out in favor of revising honor codes like the one at BYU. I think that what institutions that have honor codes or restrictions like that have to look at is, is it creating an obstacle that a victim who's been traumatized has to jump over an extra hurdle before they seek help. 
But hopefully that system is changing thanks in part to recent publicity. Like both Haley and Colleen, 21-year-old BYU student Maddie Barney says she was raped while attending the university. In Maddie's case, her alleged attacker was arrested, but word still got back to the school's honor code office. She had a criminal prosecution going forward against her alleged rapist. At the same time, the school told her she had to come in and cooperate with the honor code investigation when on following her ad attorney's advice, she said, I have to wait until the trial is over. The school said, we're not waiting. You can no longer attend BYU until you come in and cooperate with our investigation. We reached out to BYU for comment. And though they declined to appear on camera, they did have this to say. Our goal in every situation is to give students the support that they need. The victim of a sexual assault will never be referred to the Honor Code Office for being a victim of sexual assault. In addition, the university has recently announced the appointment of a four-person committee to look at potential structural changes in the way assaults are reported at the school. I hope that they follow through on this, that they take it seriously. Though it's important to remember, this is not just a BYU problem. And what many students don't realize is that there is actually a federal mandate which should prevent the kind of roadblock some of these honor codes put up. It's called Title IX, and it's supposed to stop institutions that receive federal funding from any sort of sex discrimination. There also needs to be a lot of education about Title IX rights. Students need to understand what they can do under Title IX as far as report these incidents and get counseling and get resources to help them. Though the statute of limitations at the time now prevents prosecutors from going after Haley and Colleen's alleged attackers, both girls hope that by speaking out now, they can help others in their situation. Yeah, this has really brought to light a problem, but even more so, it's brought the survivors together. They're finding so much support in each other. Um, we, we're incredibly proud of them. I mean, seeing them stand up and, and actually tell their story. I just have to say that coming here, listening to you share your story and what you're doing now, I mean, that's really what inspires me to keep on going. Thank you for wanting to hear it. To all those women and, and even men who are dealing with the same emotions, what would you say to them right now? You're not alone. Even though you feel like it, you're not alone. And you have worth. Thank, Thank you. Elizabeth, it's such a powerful story and you can see from the end there that you really did forge, uh, I guess, a relationship with these women. What is your message to people when they are trying to overcome these types of traumas? I want them to know that these things happen and they don't deserve it and it certainly was not their fault. They should not feel responsible or guilty this was another person's choice. That doesn't need to be the end of their life, that they don't need to feel like this is going to define them for the rest of their life. They can still do everything they want to do and nobody will think less of them. And if they do, then, then that person doesn't deserve to be in their life. We absolutely are thrilled to have you on board uh, and as part of the team here at Crime Watch Daily. Wonderful story. To find out how you can help the Elizabeth Smart Foundation, simply head across to our website. That's crimewatchdaily.com.